This is the time we get the recording perfect. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod. What's up, Attack? Once again, and today I'm going to try to do my best to explain to you via an analogy what the problem with Ethereum 1.0 is and how Ethereum 2.0 is offering to solve it. Now, the two big issues that Ethereum 1.0 has is high fees as well as network congestion. I believe Ethereum 2.0 is solving this, but I also believe that they didn't need to do proof of stake to perform this and I'll explain why. And that's just for my minor friends. But if you're here just for Ethereum 2.0, it does make sense on how they're gonna resolve it. But before we get into it, if you would like to join the privately hosted Rocket Chat, make sure you go down below the video and click the join button. The 199 option will unlock the secret registration URL for rocket chat and we have no scammers no spammers and so on over 200 members and they're all genuine crypto enthusiasts so i am super excited that we are building that community over there the first thing that we need to do to explain what's going on with ethereum 2.0 is to explain how ethereum 1.0 works right now in relation to of course fees and congestion so Without further ado, let's just pop into it. The other night I had an epiphany at 3 a.m. and it was thanks to this article that I had read earlier in the week, which says, let's use a popular analogy to better understand gas. Imagine you're about to set off on a road trip. Before you go, you'd like to fill your car with gas. You go to the gas station and specify how much gas you would like to fill your car with. After your car has been filled, you pay the gas station the amount of money you owe them for the gas. Now think of driving a car as being the operation you want to execute, like executing a function of a smart contract, for example. The fuel in your car is the gas and the gas station is the miner. The money you paid the gas station is the miner fees. Therefore, technically, gas is the fuel powering the Ethereum network. Importantly though, fuel isn't a currency on its own. It needs to be bought and denominated into a currency like the dollar or euro. The same goes for gas. In order for it to be paid, it needs to have its value expressed in Ether, the underlying cryptocurrency of the Ethereum network. There is no fixed price to convert gas to Ether, which means it's up to the buyers and sellers to come up with a price suitable for both parties. Now, this is a pretty good analogy, but I'm gonna take it further, take it a step further. So the way Ethereum 1.0 is functioning currently is think of it as a single lane highway with a single gas station. And everybody that wants to get on the highway needs to pay the ga that single gas station before they can get on the highway and drive. Now think of cryptocurrency or Ethereum as a two sets of growing cities and they're experiencing ex exponential growth right now. The problem is, is we still have a single lane highway and a single place to buy our gas. So now it's taking us before where it took us maybe 30 minutes and cost us, you know, whatever, let's say $5 to get to the city. Now it takes us four hours because of the traffic and it costs us like $50 to get to the city. And this is essentially what is happening with Ethereum 1.0. Ethereum 2.0 offers to resolve this with, well, sharding. And I hate that that is what they named it because it's making these videos really hard. <laughs> so shards though are essentially additional chains. So let's consider it essentially different chains. Those chains represent the highways and the gas stations. And by creating multiple chains, you are essentially creating multiple highways and multiple gas stations. And that is essentially how it's going to function. So now we'll be able to have the scalability portion and hopefully individual gas station owners, think of them as franchises, are able to at least fluctuate their prices within a given range. Why do I say a franchise? Because the individual gas stations will not have the ability to, or for full control over the cost of the fees, meaning that is still governed by another chain. So think of all the shards as individual chains that run under a primary chain, which they are going to call the beacon chain. 
The beacon chain is where all of the stakeholders who are replacing miners will validate the transactions. So the reason I say a franchise is if I'm a gas station owner and I franchised out whatever gas station that is, a Shell or whatever, I don't know, 7-Eleven, I'm still gonna have to work within the limitations of the 7-Eleven franchise with, as far as what I charge for gas and so on and so forth. I don't have complete control. So even if I was able to get a cheap batch of gas, I may still be limited by, of course, the franchise owners, or not the franchise owners, but the corporation, uh, on how much I can actually charge for that gas so I don't have as much control over it, which means that it doesn't fully solve the entire issue of scalability and price because like I said, you still have a single chain validating all of the transactions, but it should at least reduce it to a reasonable level as well as relieve congestion between the town. So as opposed to on ETH 1.0, where what did I say? Now it takes us four hours to get to the city and it costs us $10. Let's say with ETH 2.0, it'll take us 30 minutes to get to the city and it'll cost us $7.50. So our cost is probably gonna drop, you know, a little bit from where it is now, but not all the way down to where it was when we had a lower population in the city. And that is essentially the analogy for what Ethereum 2.0 is trying to do, how it's solving it, and why it needs to solve it based on Ethereum 1.0. I think it's a pretty good analogy. You guys let me know in the comment section. Let me know if I got anything incorrect and if I need to correct something for you guys. I'm always working on improving and getting better at being able to explain these things to you guys and I hope that it's helpful. There's another thing that I wanted to mention about Ethereum 2.0, and that is going to be the argument that they are going to proof of stake to essentially be more sustainable, which is just a, a, tr uh, a trigger word for some, yeah, but that's just a, you know, a, a marketing term and the reason they're saying that is they say that mining requires a lot of power. I have an argument against that, but I'm going to save it for another video. You tell me if you want to hear that argument. Hit the sub button. Hit the notification bell so you see when that video comes out, and we'll do it. But for today, we're going to stop it here. That is essentially Ethereum 1.0's issue and how Ethereum 2.0 is going to attempt to solve it and my thoughts and opinions on what portions it does solve as well as potential issues. If you have any additional questions, you can hit us up in the rocket chat, click the join button down below, and then go to the membership tab and click the secret registration URL, blah, 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 blah. I'll see you next Tuesday.